morning and welcome back to the Kristen Amdahl Show. This is episode 1144. Did I get that right? Oh, I did get it right. Yay me. <laughs> anyway, we're here live in Southwest Florida in my studio. If you are joining me live, please say hello. If you end up watching the recorded version, that's okay too. I know most people do. So please feel welcome to say hello in the comments as well or ask your questions there because I get notified of all those comments throughout the day as well. If you like my show, like my content, like my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you like today's episode, so give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, please always feel welcome to ask me whether we are live or recorded. I love the fact that we have a community here and I can share my years and years of knowledge with you. Uh, you know, I've been doing this a really long time and I am more than happy sharing any of my opinions or thoughts on making you a better crafter or making you feel more confident in your skills or just making, allowing you to feel more empowered with your creative spirit so that you can explore things as well. So more than happy to share anything that I have with you. Having said that, let's say hello to everybody who's here so far. Let's see. Good morning. Good morning, Judy K, Judy G, Lori, Sharon, Nancy, Joe, Judy W, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Oh, is it Mardi Gras? Is it Fat Tuesday? That's awesome. I have good memories of that with my grandpa. Hi, Vicki and Angela. Uh, my grandpa on my mom's side, he used to every Fat Tuesday, bring us a box of punchkeys from Hamtramck, which was the uh, Polish section of downtown Detroit. It's where they had the best punchki uh, donuts and he would drive all the, and so he lived in the suburbs just outside of Detroit, like maybe 10 minutes outside of Detroit. And we lived in the suburbs 40 minutes outside of Detroit at that point. And so he would drive from him his house down to Hamtramck in Detroit. Then he would drive past his house all the way up to our house, bring us fresh punch keys. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce them. That's how he pronounced them. And they were glazed donuts that were filled with something. And I believe most of the, the one I remember the most was raspberry filled glazed donuts. And oh my goodness, were they good. I love donuts. I never eat them, uh, but I love them. <laughs> Hi, Tammy and Vicki, Val. Good morning. Hi, Diane. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday and happy Fat Tuesday or happy Mardi Gras if you celebrate that sort of thing. Uh, has, is anybody going to eat punch keys today? Is anybody going to do any Mardi Gras celebrating today? I don't have any plans to celebrate today. Uh, I have plans to work today and that's okay too. But if anybody has any other plans, feel welcome to share them here. Does anybody make something special on this day? Does, what do you do? Hi, Gerilyn, good morning. I bet it's a fun day in New Orleans today. Hi, Trudy, good morning. Hi, Angela. Hi, Trudy, oh, I said hi, Trudy. Judy, they're at Publix. I, uh, I think they're at Publix. I think I read it in their uh, email. I get Publix emails. I like to find out what's going to be on sale and what sounds like a good idea from their sale emails. And I did see that they have punch keys. So you can go. It, I think Judy's visiting in Florida right now. And you can go to the Publix near you and they should have them in the bakery. I did see it in an email that they were going to have them this week. Now, could they be sold out? Maybe. But uh, I did know that they were going to have them in the stores. I just know they're not going to be the same. <laughs> I know they're not. And like I said, I don't really buy donuts. I love them, but I don't buy them. All right, so you may be wondering what I'm wearing, and you may already know what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Tranquil Tiles crochet shawl pattern today. This is this quarter's Shawls for Sharing pattern, and it is available on my website for $3.99, including detailed charts and written instructions, and 100% uh, of the proceeds are being donated to survivors of domestic violence for this a quarter. You can find out more about my charity and the Shawls for Sharing initiative on my website. I did get a couple of complaints in the last week or so that uh, 
I have somehow promised people that there's a free version of the pattern. I don't recall ever saying that. I am so sorry if anybody thought that I was mis, uh, misrepresenting myself or lying, uh, but I haven't been. I have specifically said that it is a paid pattern and that it is the proceeds are donated to charity in this quarter. Uh, anybody that feels like I have said something wrong, I apologize, but it is not a free pattern. It is uh, donate, the proceeds are donated to charity. Anyway, hi Tracy from South Africa. That's awesome. You live in a part of the world that I would love to visit one day. That is, in fact, I had a conversation with someone the other day. Africa, South Africa is uh, at the top of my list of places I would like to visit. I would love, love, love to go on a safari and see all of the animals there. Um, I did read a book years ago that makes me want to go see diamond mines too, but does anybody remember that Cindy, Sydney Sheldon book, Master of the Game? Such a good book. If anybody has read it, let me know. And uh, it, part of it does take place in South Africa and they, uh, they do this really crazy, uh, what is, I guess they steal diamonds from a diamond mine, but the way they go about doing it was so, so adventurous and so scary. Oh, it's, and it's a long book and you know how much I love long books. Like, mm, it's so good. <laughs> did, did anybody else read Master of the Game? Uh, Vicki did. And uh, Cindy's from South Africa too. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely on the top of my list of places to visit. Uh, do you have safaris in South Africa, right? I, in, in the north side, right? I've also heard that I should go to Kenya or Namibia for safaris. Um, this, and I would love to see the craftsmanship in uh, Africa. I know there's a lot of great crafting uh, communities in all sorts of countries in Africa. And yeah, it's just top of my list of places that I would like to visit outside of the U.S. I still have places I want to see uh, in the U.S. too. New Orleans is the top of my list here and Africa. I'm not sorry, and uh, Alaska, I mean. Yeah, New Orleans and Alaska, Yellowstone, Hawaii would be the top of my list in the U.S. that I haven't seen yet. And then uh, a safari in Africa. And I think the northern side of South Africa is, I think, where I've, uh, dis where somebody told me, described uh, a, an area that I really wanted to go. Anyway, I haven't done much research in it because I know it's expensive and I can't afford it yet. So I figure I'll put that uh, put the research on hold until I'm closer to th that dream coming true. Oh, we have a visitor. Hi there. Do you want to say hi to everybody? We've got a baby Bjorn with, with us today. Hi, Donna. Good morning. Hello, baby Bjorn. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? We're going to go outside after the show's over, aren't we? He got spooked and didn't want to go outside this morning, so um, we'll, we'll, we will try again after the show because I know he'd like to go. Uh, yeah, going to all the national parks in the U.S. would be an amazing uh challenge or uh, goal also Tammy I've often said that just in Florida I would love to go to all the state parks yes 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 and then throughout the country it would take probably years to do all of that but what a fun experience that would be too you're gonna sit with me now that's so sweet honey does anybody have any questions before we uh, move on I was gonna I want to talk about edging today specifically with this shawl in mind and talk about the different ways that we could uh, modify the edging and do something different and how you can pick and choose edgings for uh, any type of a project. I don't believe I've touched on this with the Tranquil Tiles shawl yet, have I? Because I know we've. my goal each quarter is to take whichever pattern that I donate to Shawls for Sharing and then deconstruct it and talk about all the different ways that you could reuse the pattern for other things, which is always so fun for me. <laughs> anyway, I don't believe we've done a, a deep dive into edging on this one, have we? We've talked briefly, but I don't think we've done a deep dive. Hello, Dee. Good morning. We don't have sun here today either, Chris. We've had these weird clouds for the last two days, 
it looks stormy but i wonder if it's smoke i feel like there might be some fires in the everglades it's the end of our uh it's we're, as we're getting to the end of our dry season we get a lot of fires here and um they haven't nothing's been close close to me like we haven't gotten any uh, not even close close not even nearly not even barely close for evacuations or stuff like that but i smell smoke in the air pretty regularly and we've had really thick dark clouds with no expectations of rain the last two days and i'm wondering if there's some uh fire going on in the everglades so uh not sure about that but it's definitely been gloomy the last two days here and not normal gloomy where can you patch, uh, purchase the shawl pattern? Uh, you can purchase it on my website. Let's see, I will find it for you. You can look in the crochet pattern section of my website or all the pattern section of my website. And all you need to do is search by the latest to find something recent, or you can use the search button and search by the name Tranquil Tiles, or you can filter in the, your, uh, when you're doing a search on my website, you can use the subcategory filter. So you can search by shawl, or you can search by number four worsted weight yarn. You can search by project type and all that sort of thing as well. But I just shared the link and Judy did too. Thanks, Judy. Hi, Christine, good morning. Oh, who's a sweet baby? Yeah. Okay, so uh, 75 degrees sounds like we're going to have record highs this week in the 90s. I can't believe it's already summer again. Bjorn's not going to be happy because I have to cover up the windshield of the RV once it gets hot again to help with the heat, uh, which can help with the air conditioner. And that means he's not going to get to sit in the windshield anymore and i know how much he loves to sit uh, up there and watch everybody and uh be all warm and cozy and wait for me at night when i come home from catering so i'm bummed that i have to wrap it up again but uh, i have to be responsible it can't always be about spoiling my baby right <laughs> okay uh, i have chatted way too long we need to talk about edging so how many people here already have crochet power to my edging book if you have that book there's a great section in the front that talks about different ways to modify a project to to ease around corners which is something that is important to know for edging something like a shawl. So I want to see who has the book already because you'll be able to read that front section about different ways to add fullness to a corner. And it's there's a lot of examples and a lot of photos. So that section of the book is going to be super, super helpful to you uh, regarding what we're talking about today. I'm going to take, you know, we're going to discuss it, but if you want to a, a deeper discussion about it or a deeper education about it, I highly recommend checking out that book in that front section. If you have it already, great. If you don't, you can get it on my website still. I do have a sale going on on my website for crochet for all of my hardcover books. I am discontinuing selling hardcover books just to make my life a little bit easier with inventory and books going forward will be available on Amazon only, not on my website and Amazon. Just the eBooks will be available on my website going forward. Uh, which you can instantly download it as an ebook right now too. Hi Rose, thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is a this is a motif shawl, so it's made with so we and they're worked on the diagonal. So you start with a row of half motifs or triangles along the top. Then it, the rest of it is square motifs with a two-sided join all the way to the bottom. And with a triangular shawl, whether you're doing it in motifs or in a top-down increasing pattern, or a bottom-up uh, bottom decreasing pattern, or, or a bottom-up increasing pattern. There's all sorts of ways to make shawls, and we can talk about that on another day. But in the meantime, anytime you're wanting to add an edging to a shawl, it's that corner down there that can sometimes cause you problems, because in order for an edging to turn the corner, you have to have fullness there to do it. There are a lot of ways to do that. You can either manipulate your stitch pattern to create double increases like we do in a top-down increasing shawl to create that fullness or you can do a setup row and create the fullness there 
or if you're working side to side like in a perpendicular edging you can add several short rows in there to do it as well does that make sense to everybody because i want to make sure those three options at least make a little bit sense excuse me i've got the hiccups before we move on because if you understand that we can move on and talk about those three options yes chris i agree it's too early in the year to be hot the fact that we're going to have 90 degrees again this week is really early <laughs> hi artwork good morning bjorn is just roly-polying for me to rub his belly under the table it's so cute <laughs> I'll put this back on so everybody can still see it. I'm just waiting to see if anybody has questions about the three types of edging before I move forward. Because I'm going to specifically talk about the middle version today, which is where we do a setup row to create the fullness we need in the corners. And also to modify our multiple if necessary, which is super easy to do and also uh, allows you to modify a project to work any kind of a stitch pattern you want then which is really awesome Nancy understands so far good I just want to wait a second make sure there aren't any other questions before I move on and we will be talking about this particular shawl specifically because this stitch pattern requires a multiple of five stitches plus a couple extra. And uh, it could be done in a multiple of five plus one. It happens to be done in a multiple of five plus three. And that's just because it worked out for my stitch pattern and my stitch count. But, uh, and so I modified the edge a little extra to have those extra three stitches. But this is a great example of modifying a stitch pattern for whatever purpose you need it to. And we're specifically talking about edging. So the original edging for this was a multiple of five plus one. And I wanted two extra stitches on the end just to fortify the edges. So it's two single crochets on each edge. But the, the multiple in that first row is chain seven, skip four, and single crochet in the next. So it is a multiple of five plus one. And I just added a couple extra, just, just like in knitting, when you add a couple extra stitches on the end for like a salvage edge, I was just looking to do that as well. So in the setup row before the beginning of the edging, if you've already read the pattern or you've already worked the pattern, you'll see that I said to put extra stitches in the center V here in that center V down in the bottom. And that was because I wanted to create extra fullness so we could get a full repeat right in the corner. Now, if you read the, and I already had a, a, a significant amount of fullness and I wasn't worried about having to add a ton, I added a little bit. If you read the front section in Crochet Power 2, my edging book, we talk in a lot of detail about different ways to add fullness in the corners. And so this would apply to a triangular shawl that has the corner here. It would also apply to a baby blanket or an afghan that has four corners on it, or an afghan that has more than four corners on it, or a poncho, or anything else that's big that has multiple corners. When you have those corners, if you work your pattern straight, it's not, it, okay, here's a good example. When you're making a hat from the top down, you do your increases for the crown, and then when you start working even in rows, what happens? You create walls, and you end up working in another direction, right? Well, if you were to try to edge a shawl around corners or edge an afghan around the corners and not create fullness in the corners first, you'd create a lip. It would almost like to be the beginning of a bowl or the beginning of a giant hat. Does that make sense? If you're not creating increases around corners, you end up going in that other direction and creating a wall. That's great in a hat. That's great in a bowl. It's horrible in <laughs> things that you want to keep flat. So I hope this is a good analogy to help you visualize where and when you don't want increases at corners and why you do want increases in corners. Because then if you want to keep this, the project flat to go around the corners, you need fullness there. 
and crochet power too in that front section i show you several ways to do this ultimately you want a double increase there right just like if you were doing a stitch pattern for those corners you do a double increase you take one repeat of the pattern and you turn it into a three a double increase means you have your original and you have a new one on either side. Maybe it works better. These three, these three, I don't know. So let's say, okay, we'll do it this way. So let's say you're working your top down triangular shawl and in the center you have your original stitch pad, multiple of the stitch pattern here and a double increase means you're adding two, it looks like you're doing three and you are doing three, but the three counts the original and the two extras. Are there exceptions to this? obviously there are there's a lot of ways to make a double increase and it depends on the stitch pattern and what have you but we're talking generally right now and in, in generally speaking a double increase is done by taking that original multiple and tripling it which is actually doubling it because you've got your original and two extras so when you're doing the edging if you don't want to and it's it can especially if you're not a designer and you're not familiar with deconstructing patterns to create uh, increases within a pattern that's a complicated step in a lot of stitch patterns and the easier way to do that are the tips that i provide in the uh, front section of crochet power two by doing a setup row and concentrating whatever increases you need to accommodate three repeats of the pattern instead of one you can do that with a row of double crochet or single crochet in a setup row and do all of those increases there so let's say your stitch multiple is five stitches which this one is and you want to work around that corner you could either double your stitches two double crochets for in every stitch this side of the center repeat and this side of the center repeat so we'll get two extra sets of five right or you well, we might need to bring out the board for this did i leave my pens out though i did okay i'm going to show this both ways and if anybody has any questions please ask okay so here's two, two top-down triangular shells. My pens are getting weak. So let's say you have your five. Okay, and let's say we've got. Okay, this those lines are representing everywhere that there is a multiple of five stitches okay we're just working in even numbers right now so in order to we need to do a single increase on these edges and we need to do a double increase here so what you could do is work ten stitches ten stitches where there are five stitches there and how do we do that two double crochets in each of the next five stitches right and here we could do three so the easiest way would be to do two stitch, two double crochets in each of the first five stitches, one double crochet in each stitch across to the center five stitches, and we could do three double crochets in each of those five stitches to create 15. Then one double crochet in each stitch across, two double crochets in the last stitch here, and then we get one extra repeat here, two extra repeats here, and one extra repeat here to represent a single increase, a double increase, and a single increase. Does that make sense to everybody? And then I'll show you one other way, another way to do it on this one here. But I want to make sure that this makes sense first. Good morning, Sarah. Glad you could be here. Sharon says yes. Good. Tammy says yes. Judy says yes. Uh, artwork says yes Nancy says yes all right we're off to the races okay so then on this next one here we're gonna use the same even numbers and let's do two double crochets times five for ten stitches just like we did in the previous one at the top but down here let's say working three double crochets in each of those five stitches depending on the yarn you're using the, the amount of density in your gauge whether you're doing something tight or loose if you're doing something lacy and you're doing a loose gauge like a thinner yarn with a thicker hook 
working three stitches in each of the next five won't create too much of a puckering here, especially since you're doing an edging afterwards. If you're doing a tighter gauge, like working with the, with the normal suggested hook size for a yarn, or even doing something tighter than that, that could end up puckering a bit. So here's another, uh, another example of what we could do down here. We still need double increases at this corner, but we don't have to do them all at the point. We could do them on either side of the point. So we'll do in this section, in the repeat on either side of that center five, we could do two double crochet times five for 10 stitches. And you can, can you see how that's the same stitch count as this? It's just done a, a little more spread out. We end up doing a single increase on either side of the center, which is the equivalent of doing two increases all in the same five stitches in the center. Does that make sense? And that's, you can spread it out and create less bulk or less ruffling there if it's a stitch pattern or a gauge that's more sensitive to that. There are plenty of stitch patterns that aren't sensitive to that, especially in the blocking, but there are some that are. So I want to make sure that you understand that you have both of those options. Wow, seeing a lot of yeses. Great. Now you could also do this with two setup rows. You could do a setup row to get close to the multiple that you need. Let's say... Let's say you don't want to use, let's say your, your stitch count at the end of the shawl and the, before the edging is a multiple of five plus one. Let's say your edging that you want to use is a multiple of eight plus one. You could still create, hold on, my battery. I'm having trouble charging my phone this morning. My charger didn't want to work or I didn't plug it in right or something overnight. Anyway, um, let's say that you want to change the multiple before you do the edging. You could, if you want to combine the math, you can combine the math and do it on this row. Or if it makes it easier, you could do it on a separate setup row. You could do a setup row before this to change your stitch count from five plus one to eight plus one. And let me show you how to do that. So let's say you're, you have, we're just going to go with easy numbers here. Let's say you have 201 stitches on that row. It's probably more, but we're going to do easy math. 201 stitches is is 40 times 5 plus 1. So if we needed a multiple of 5 plus 1, it's 40 multiples of 5 plus 1. Let's say you wanted it to be a multiple of 8 plus 1 though. So we're let's see, what is 8 times uh Oh, well, this actually works out just perfect. So we need to pick another one because 25 times eight is 200 plus one would still be 12 one. So let's make it a little harder. Let's do, um, let's say we want our multiple to be a multiple of seven plus one. So we would have to figure out what's close. So seven times 20, let's see what seven times 26. Oh, I got a calculator here. 26, uh, Seven. Okay, two. Okay, so let's do twenty-eight times seven. It's one ninety-six. Okay, so let's do twenty-nine times seven. Because twenty-eight times seven gave us one ninety-six. That's under two hundred. So we need to increase to get up to the right number. So twenty-nine times seven is what? 203. Actually, no, let's do, no, let's go back to 28 times 7 is 196. Uh, so in order to get that to 201, okay. So, all right, here's what I did. So I took the 201, divided it by 7, because we're looking for a multiple of 7 plus 1 now. So 201 divided by 7 is 28 plus a, a decimal. We're, that's all we need to know from that. So then we do 28 times, I'm going to show you my work in a 7. 28 times 7 is 196. 201 minus 196 is 5. Okay, so here's what you would need to do. So we knew our original stitch count was 201. Okay, and that's 
and we needed a and we have a multiple of five plus one, so that's 40 times five plus one. But let's say we want to switch it to a multiple of seven plus one. You can do this in an, in two ways. You could so first you want to you want to divide 201 by seven to see where are, where are we? What are we close to? And we're just over 28, just under 29. Whether or not you want to increase or decrease to get to your multiple of seven plus one, you would either work from 28 or 29. We're doing an edging. I think it makes more sense to work up so that we're increasing up to our stitch count. So I decided to go with that 28. If you were wanting to decrease down, you could start with the 29 and decrease down to whatever ends up being 201 still. So 28 times seven is 196. 201 minus 196 is five. Does anybody know what you need to do now with that new number five to end up getting your multiple of 201? You would need to increase by five stitches to get to a multiple of 201 still. Does that make sense? I think I'm, I feel like I'm explaining the wrong thing here. Hold on a second. If you're already at 201. Ah, I, hold on. I said this wrong at the very end. Hold on. Hold on. So if we want a multiple uh, I said it, I, I, it was right up until the end here. So if we want a multiple of seven plus one, it's 28 times seven equals 196 plus one is 197, okay? In order to get our stitch count to 197 from 201 minus 197, we would need to decrease by four stitches. So let's do this again for 29 times seven for 29 multiples of seven plus one. So 29 times seven is 203 plus one to make sure it's a multiple of seven plus one we would need a stitch count of 204 204 minus 201 is three stitches okay so whether or not you want to increase or decrease to change your stitch count from a multiple of five plus one to a multiple of seven plus one you would either need to subtract by four subtract by four, decrease by four to bring your stitch count to 197 to be a multiple of 28 times seven plus one, or you would need to increase your stitch count by three to do uh, 29 multiples of seven plus one. Does that make sense? And if this is too complicated to do at the same time as you're doing these e increases, you could, uh, you could do this on a separate row but it's such a small number, over 200 stitches, whether you're increasing by three or decreasing by four, um, you, would, you could either do three increases evenly spaced around here while doing your increases for the corners, or you could separate it into two setup rows. Does that make sense? Thanks, Barbara. You could definitely combine this math with this math and do all of this on one setup row, or you could separate it and do it on two setup rows. And there are times when it makes sense to increase up to your stitch count, and there are times when it makes sense to decrease down to your stitch count. But since we're already creating fullness here and it's an edging where increases are important, I would suggest rounding up to the 29 repeats of, of seven instead of rounding down to the 28 repeats of seven plus one. Artwork says it clarifies, clarifies a lot. Good. I'm glad. And I can put this on the screen here, try to get it to not glare if anybody wants to take a screenshot of this. Let's zoom in even if you want to take a screenshot of that and then a separate screenshot of that. Oh, 
don't think you have to be fearless. You have to want to be experimental. That's all. There's, I mean, it's not that, it, this isn't super complicated. There's way more complicated things that we can get into another day. Uh, this isn't that complicated. But again, if it's complicated to you, that's okay. Just follow the pattern then. This pattern can be done, you know, with the existing edging. And if you want to mod modify an edging and don't want to do all that work, Pick an edging that has the same multiple as the edging that's in the pattern. Multiple of five plus one. You could plug plug and play with any multiple that is already within that, and you can do things that are factors of that stitch uh, of that multiple. So let's. Uh, does everybody know what a factor is? Okay, let's go back. To, so, what is five a factor of? Five, because we're talking about five multiple of five plus one. So that would work well with a multiple of ten plus one. 15 plus 1, 20 plus 1, well, that is a, as long as it, actually, that's not true. 10 and 20 wouldn't be multiples, not 15. 15 would be 1 and a half. So if you're looking to do a different stitch pattern that's not a multiple of 5 plus 1, you could look at any stitch pattern that's a multiple of 10 plus 1 or 20 plus 1. Those could be plugged and played into a stitch that has 20, 201 stitches because, te, because 5 is a factor of both 10 and 20 and fills, fits in. Yep, experimenting can be fun. But, you know, anytime you're trying to learn something new, is it possible you're going to make mistakes? Of course it is, but that's how we learn. We learn from experimenting, making mistakes, and learning from our mistakes. It is okay to make mistakes when you're experimenting and being creative. It does end up making you a better creative person because you're learning more and you're learning more hands-on. What you can learn from experimentation is so much more profound and longer lasting than just hearing somebody tell you. What I'm telling you today could go, you could remember this for a day or two and you might forget about it next week, but if you go and practice any of this and you, it works for you or doesn't work for you and you understand why it doesn't work for you and you re uh, back up and redo it and it does work for you, you will remember this a lot longer. So anytime you can apply what you're learning to something tangibly, you will get more out of it, 100%. Hi, Karen. Does anybody have any other questions? Again, this is a huge subject and we could do it with tons and tons of examples, but for, day, but for today, we're focusing on the Tranquil Tile Shawl. And so all of this information really applies to that shawl specifically. But I have talked in general, I've spoken generally about it too, with, in respect to the front section of Crochet Power 2. So if you wanted to apply this to any other pattern, I would highly recommend reading that section of the book. Even again, if you've already read it once, it's always good to read something that applies to what you're wanting. It's one, like you get a book, you read the whole thing. Oh, oh my God, awesome, loved everything. But then, as a reference book, it's important to go back and read, reread the sections that apply to what you're trying to do in the moment. So if you are looking to add fullness to create an edge around a corner in anything, go reread that section anytime you're getting ready to do that, and it will just give you more confidence and more skills and more tips to be able to go out and experiment on your own as well. Does anybody have any other questions? so fun. I love to teach. I don't know why, but I absolutely love teaching. Specifically when people understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I know, and I know it's complicated for some people, but if it's complicated for you, that's okay. That's why you can just follow patterns too. This is just extra. If, and you know, if you don't want to think about it and you just want to set it and forget it, so to speak, just follow the patterns. The patterns are great as they are, and you can follow the pattern and do exactly what it says and get beautiful results just like this. However, if you want to experiment or try something different, these are ways to take baby steps into trying something different instead of having to just redesign the whole thing. Uh, you don't have to be a math enthusiast designer and design something from scratch sometimes you can take an existing pattern and just 
you know, put a little twist on it. And so that's why I do these mini lessons so that you can take baby steps into exploring things on your own. Thanks, artwork. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Great, I'm glad, Chris. All right, yes. Some people are understanding this, great. And if you don't, like I said, it's okay. Not everybody has to want to do this. Some people, everybody crafts for different reasons too. Some people craft just to get their minds off of other parts in their life and that's okay too. And so if you don't want to think and you just want to zone out when you're crafting, the patterns are perfect for that. And you don't have to deviate from a pattern if you don't want to, you know, that's fine too. I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying that you have to do this. These are more options. I just think the more options we have, the better choices we can make for ourselves. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with following a pattern to a T, nothing. I wanna make sure that that's really well received today as well because this has nothing to do with needing to change a pattern it's only if you want to explore and do something else that's all thanks Trudy we'll wait another second to see if there's any other questions and again I know not everybody watches this live if you have questions and you watch the recorded always feel welcome to ask questions there. And even if you watch the live or the recorded and later on today you go, wait, but what about this? Come back and ask me. If I can answer it in the comments, I will. If I feel like it deserves a lengthy discussion, then I will save it for another episode of the show. But one way or, the, or, one way or another, we'll get to the bottom of all of it because the show wouldn't exist without you and I can't thank you enough for all of your questions. It just makes the show so much more interesting when I can answer real questions from real crafters. So thank you to all of you. If you like my channel, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and always, always, always leave comments and quest leave your questions in the comments so I can help you further. Um, is this shawl a multiple of motifs put together? Not sure what you mean by that. It is squares, um, not really a multiple. You could do any number of triangles across the top, depending on how many, how wide you want your shawl and what your gauge is per square and per triangle. But it starts with a row of triangles across the top and you make as many triangles as you want your pattern wide. And each row of squares after that will, each subsequent row will be one less square than there was in the previous row. So for example, this one starts with five triangles on the top row, then it's four squares in the next row, three squares in the next row, two squares in the next row, and one square in the last row. Thanks, Karen. No, it is not made in one piece. It is made in squares, in motifs. Hi, Irma. Hopefully that answered your questions. If you have the pattern, it'll make a lot more sense. And even if you see it in multiple colors, it kind of makes more sense too. So uh, there are several videos about this, like in this, uh, in the video from these pieces, you can definitely see how the motifs are made separately and joined together because I've done them in separate colors. You can color block and do it this way. You can also change color within the squares and you can see the squares a lot better in this as well. The squares kind of blend together and give the illusion of an all over stitch pattern in one color. But when you see this and then see this, you can kind of see the squares a little better when I pull this one back up. See, there's the center of that square. And there's the joining of the four squares. Okay, great, Vicki gets it now. Wonderful, thank you, Irma. All right, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed Baby Bjorn's cameo our discussion and deep dive, deeper dive into modifying uh, stitch patterns and multiples for creating edging. Hope you enjoy chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.